All right, uh, welcome. We're going through the practice example of object-oriented programming with the job application. This is the step one of the program. Um, what you'll notice is that we have a, the question has been asked, but we've been given a class diagram, and then we asked questions based on that class diagram. Now, the first question says create a job class. Now, it doesn't ask you to create a project, but when we're working with NetBeans, we actually, our first step is to create a project. So in this case, I'm going to call it a job step one memo. And I'm going to put it, uh, whenever I do work, I do work inside, a, if it needs to be accessed at a later stage by other people, I do it inside the general resource. If it's something specifically to a class, I do it inside their matricula. In this case, I'm going to do it inside the general, in, with inside the activity that we're particularly working with. So we're now working with the job application um, and step one memo. Okay, so we're not going to create a main class here. We're just going to go finish. So we've got our project set up. And the first question states, create a write code to create a class called job. So in this case, we go right click new, Java class, and we call it job. Remember, it is case sensitive. It should be capital letters. I do suggest also putting it in a package. I'm just going to call my package Pac-Man. All right, so you'll see that we've got the author already set up and we've got the class. A couple of common errors is that um, people don't forget that this starts the class that's in the class. So they start coding down here and wonder why it doesn't work. And the reason why is you must make sure you're within the curly brackets. Curly brackets in Java syntax shows you begin and end. So begin class, end class. Okay, so now the first question answered, well done, we have one mark. <laughs> All right, now the next one says, write code to create the fields provided in the question above. Now, if we look at the question above, uh, we're going to be adding fields in the question above. So we look at the class diagram above. Negative string title. So negative means that it's private. It means that the accessor is private. You can't work with this. This is UML uh, class diagrams. This is standard format for any programming language. This could be C++, VB.NET, which some of those C-sharp, um, uh, Python, whatever. Whatever programming language you're working with, this is the general syntax of, of class diagrams. So in this case, it's going to be private, and it is going to be string title. We then have another one, uh, private, so data type is string, and this is then the company. Uh, grade 11, you're listening, or you're working, not... Uh... Alright, um, and then after that, we've got uh, private uh, string, it's then the description, that's not how you spell description. And then uh, same thing for, now this one is a boolean, so your data type will be boolean. Now you'll notice that boolean comes out blue and string comes out black. Now on this, available would just be whether the job was available or not. In other words, has it been taken or has it, uh, is it still uh, available? Um, the reason why string is black and boolean is blue it's because string is technically an object, it is a class. So string is a class I'm creating, description is an object of the string class. And the reason why is because it has actually got an array of characters in there. So the word hello is actually an array with the character H in the first position, E in the second position, L in the third position, and so forth. Um, and remember, uh, those positions start at position zero onwards. So um, string is a, actually a class not a data type, where boolean is a data type. And you'll notice also int is a data type, so it stays blue, and in this case, salary. Now, uh, with the being string, there's a lot of hacks in Java to make it much easier to manipulate and so forth, so you'll notice that. Now, the next question asks us, it says they create a default constructor. Now, my default constructor, alt insert constructor, enter. You don't tick any of them, it has no parameters, it's just called the same, you'll see it's got constructors have no return type, it is not void, which means not, it returns nothing, it's just left a blank. So it is public job, which means this is a constructor, and we are going to set everything, our purpose of our constructor is to initialize our object. Um, Connor and Enzo, um, please off that. Um, so we've got there, uh, so our company, is also equal to blank. Um, so we need to initialize everything. So our description. Now, when it comes to uh, available, you can if it doesn't specify what the default is, you can choose. But in my case, 
is defaultly, if we've got a new job, it means the job is available. Otherwise, why would we add it to our system? So I'm going to make the default, uh, but def def for Boolean can be true or false. But then for strings, it's always just blank and zero unless otherwise specified. Now, the next uh, question we've got there is uh, create a parameterized constructor that will only receive the title and the company. So now, on here, title and company. Now, that's all good and fine. My title is received, so I've ticked, I received the title through and the company, and I've received the title and I received the company. Now, the issue is, what about the rest? You have to still initialize the rest. You can't just go, okay, well, I've, I've done that, so now I don't have to initialize the rest. You still need to initialize all fields. So the purpose of a constructor is to ensure all fields are initialized. So we initialize all fields. We move on from there, and we go down to the next question. It says, create write codes for a setter and getter. You will notice in the class diagram, I've also included a fully parameterized constructor there, but I didn't ask it in the questions. Um, so, but there would be no marks awarded for that, but I'm just going to code it anyway, uh, just to show you guys. Fully parameterized constructor would be every single one of those fields would be added. Okay, now the next question states, write code for getters for the title and available, and setters for available and salary. Um, to add setters and getters, alt insert, setters and getters, and it asks for a specific one, so I could only tick those specific ones, but quite frankly, there's no harm in creating it for all of them. Um, so I'm just going to create it for all of them. And on the next one, it says create a two string method. Now, alt insert, two string generate. Sweet, we've got a two string, but that does not look. Now our two string remember it returns a text representation and it overrides because it actually a two string object already exists. Previous videos we've gone over this. So I am going to just go through this quite quickly. Now in this case, um, delete because I do not want to return it in the format that it says. I want to return it in this format. So I want the company, then I want a space, then a dash, then a space, then the title, then a space, then a dash, then a space, then an R, then a space, then the salary, then an insert and description. So that's the order we want to put it in. So I want my company, so I say I want the company field. Then I want a literal, we call this a literal. Inside of inverted commas, it means it is unchangeable. This is a variable, so we want whatever this object's company is, because remember when you create multiple instances of this job, whatever the company is there. Then it wanted the title. So plus title. And then it wanted a space, dash, space, r, space, dash, plus salary. Oops salary and then it wanted a new line so we put a backslash n and on the new line it would then just be the description okay so that's now I've, I've put it out we are appending strings here so after company we are appending adding on to the end a literal of space dash space and the title and going through there now on from there the next question is our challenge question get scaled salary now I got raised to me and I lost two chocolates from this uh, that my English was incorrect here. It shouldn't have said any rating point. It said per a rating point above five. I should get in here. It should say per a rating point above. Now, in a test situation, I would have marked anything that answered the question as it was worded correct. Um, but in this case, um, I'm correcting in my English, which means that for every, so in other words, if they got seven, they would get 20% above the standard salary if they got a rating of seven. So, on this case, we're going to create a method public. The first thing we look at is what is returned. And in this case, it's going to return the salary. So the salary is a integer. So we're going to say public int because it's going to return the salary. So return say a scale salary, open brackets. And it then says it's going to receive a rating that that client got. So moving on, when I go to a rating, so I'm going to say int rating. So we're now going to receive a rating through. So from our user interface or from wherever, we'll send through a rating to here and then it would return the salary that that person would get for that job. Um, so now, I start off by creating a temp variable of the data type that is going to be returned. So in this case, I'd create a temporary integer, I initialize it to a blank value, I return it. That will ensure, out of these, if I made this worth uh, six marks, let's say, or let's say five marks, whatever it was, uh, that would ensure I get two in this case, because my data type is correct and I've returned the correct data type. So my method head is correct, 
and I return the correct data. So that would give me two marks out of this method. But now I need to determine uh, based on the scale of the rating. So if we come up with an example, if for example this the cost salary was 1000 and this pupil got a rating of 6, we would then rate 1 plus You could actually go into Excel and just come up with some examples of this. So, like, physically go through. What if the user got seven? What would happen? And how did we work that? For one, we worked at int increase. The increase was based on five minus the rating. Sorry, rating minus five. Now, the reason why I've done this is if the user got a rating of five, sorry, seven, or if it got a rating of five, it would be zero. Which is correct. If, it's, if they got a rating of 5, it says that the, it will be changed by 0%. Every rating point above 5, it would be increased by 10%. So this would give me, if it was 6, it would give me 1. If it was 7, it would give me 2. If it was 8, it would give me 3. So this would give me how much? And if it was below 5, so if it was 4, it would become negative 1. Negative 2, negative 3. I then could make my temp is equal to salary plus, open bracket, salary times increment value times 10 divided by 100. Um, you can chat with me with regards to the logic of this, but literally I'm just saying it's, it's the salary plus, now if increment was minus 1, it would it would add, so this would end up being a negative number, so then it would be minus. So if it was negative, if it was minus 1, so in other words the rating was sent with 4, salary would be 1,000, times 4, ne sorry, times negative 4, so that will be the salary and negative value of negative 4, times 10 divided by 100. So this will be a tenth of the, this will be negative 100, that would, this result would come out as, and return that. Um, I'll go through that in, in, in person for anyone who needs to uh, get the logic of that a bit better. Alright, so now, <clears throat> that's that one question done. We may now move down to my job manager class. So I save this, make sure you save regularly. Right click new uh, Java class, and this one's called Job Manager. So this is where you guys are starting to uh, battle a bit. Job Manager. Now in the Job Manager, uh, the first question it asks to create an array of jobs called job called jobs of size 500. Now there's different ways of doing this, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stick to one way to show you guys on here. Private job array jobs, semicolon. This is the exact same as this. There's no difference where you put the square brackets. Now, it asks then later for a default constructor, and you could then say jobs equals new job size 500. Now, a lot of people do this, do this over here, over at the beginning. And I'm comfortable for you guys to do that, but I realize then you're stipulating, and no matter what the constructor is, it's going to be size 500. And there might be examples where that isn't. So I'm, you're, I'm going to indicate here we're going to initialize it in our default constructor. But you need to make sure in all constructors you initialize it do size 500. Okay, now the next thing that we got there, it also says create a counter to keep track of the number of job objects. So we are going to create a counter, which will be an integer, which will determine the number of job objects. I can call it num jobs, I can call it counter, I can call it bacon. Well, I don't suggest you call it bacon, but you get the idea. Um, and then you need to say at the moment how many jobs have been initialized? Zero. Remember in the last video I went through that, that those object arrays. I'm actually going to start doing that now because I do think it is worthwhile you guys getting the visuals of this. Is I've created a job object array. It says position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. So I'm creating an array up to a 500 size that would allow positions of it, a, of the job object. A job object has title, company, description, available, and salary. So any job object would have title, uh, company, uh, description, available, 
and uh, salary. So all of all, every single one would have that. But at the moment, we are at position zero because we have not created any objects. So um, if we go down to 500, okay, it's 500 a bit, but whatever. Um, so there will be tons of positions that can point to new objects. At the moment, we haven't initialized any new objects, but when we do, we'll add it there and we'll increment our num. So at the moment, our num uh, jobs points to position zero. So do you guys get that? Uh, now, so that's what's happening in RAM at the moment, or how we're setting up our structure. We've got a structure for our jobs. So this is our job class structure. And at the moment, we've got an array of the job where we can point to multiple instances of this. But at the moment, we haven't done that. Now, I move down on here, and we take a look at our next question. Our next question says create a default constructor, which I've kind of already done. Um, and I've initialized my different positions. I'm sweet with that. And the next step is create a method called add job that will receive the company and the title and position in the array using the appropriate constructor. Do not forget to increment the counter. So here we're adding to our array. So firstly, what data type is this method returning? The answer is it's returning nothing. So it means it's going to be void. And we call it add job. And it should receive a title and a company. So we receive as a parameter, so we talk about receiving, it's going to be the title and the company. Now on here, we're going to move, work with adding our job. So now we've got jobs, position, num jobs, because remember at the moment, it's pointing, if we go back to our RAM, this is a picture of our RAM, our RAM, our num jobs is pointing to position zero, which is over here. So we know we're going to initialize that position. So whenever we go there, it's going to be going to position num jobs. I'm going to say is equal to new job. And when you use a constructor that receives the title and the company, so that's the correct constructor. You'll see it gave me a choice of all the constructors that I did have. So I've created those three constructors. And if you only created two, it'll only show you two. But I've created three. But that is the one we want to use. So we press enter on there. Remember, use your control space bar. The next thing that we move on from is do not forget to increase your number of jobs. Because now we've if we add an object in there, if we run this method, it means we've added an object, so we would want to move num jobs to point to the next position. So we would go num jobs plus plus. Now, we've got the jobs there. Um, we're now going to work with the toString method. Now, the toString method is to return a text representation of whatever jobs we have in this array. And it says that each job should be returned each uh, with a separated by a blank line. So in other words, our display, if I had five jobs, it would display the first job and then a blank line and then the second job and so forth. So we're going to create our two string. Again, you can go alt and search, you can overwrite the two string. I want to untick both because I don't want to have anything to return technically at the moment. And I'm going to delete that. I go, you create a blank string. You can call it whatever you want. I just use S all. So I create a blank string, I return that blank string. But now I want to get everything from the array. So we loop through the array. To a loop through an array, wherever num jobs is determined. So right now if there's nothing, num jobs is zero, so it won't loop at all. But later, if num jobs becomes 14, it will loop through every single one of these positions and, and work with that. And we'll get into that when we create our user interface and we go through logically, we'll see what's happening there. But we'll literally loop through up until num jobs, because num jobs is where we want to loop up to. And this is how to loop through the array. In any situation where you need to loop through the array, you'll do that. So in this case, we're going to go um, s all plus equals. I'm going to say jobs position uh, uh, i dot two string, and then we want a blank line. So this will be on a new line, but to have a blank line, we need a second answer so that there will be a blank line in the middle of it. So that would be that. That is literally the two string. I'm looping through each position in my array and I'm saying add to the two string and return it. Now, the next one it says get pause. Write code called get pause, which will receive a title and return a position in that in the array that this title job can be found. So in this case, I'm going to go um, public int get pause string title. So we're receiving a title for a job and we're going to return that position that's got that title. So now the first thing I am going to do here is I'm going to return negative one, which means 
if I get to this point, it means I haven't found it, because as soon as you return, it exits that method. So if I do this, I know that means that here I'm going to search for it. And here, if not found, it will run this. So it's going to search for it here and return it here. If it manages to successfully find it, it will not even run this. But if it does find if it doesn't find it, it's then going to return negative one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop. I'm going to say while well, it's less than num job, so I'm looping through my array. Like I say, you will always do when you're working with array, you loop through your array. And when we initialize some objects here, I'm going to show you um, in such here how it will work and ram these methods. But we'll we'll code it up and then we'll get it, we'll show you from there. All right. Now the next statement uh, we've got 20 minutes left of this lesson, so we get a bit of a move on if I want to demonstrate that as well. We're now going to say um, if open brackets jobs position i so as we loop through our array we checking dot get title if the title of that particular object is equal to the dot equals title of this object so if they are equal to each other in other words it's equal to the title that's been sent through here then what we can do is we can say return i and that will then return the position in the array where that thing is found so we're saying if the title of that object in that position is equal to the title that was sent through in the parameter return i. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we then have the description. So um, I'm getting myself confused here. But then the question asks us um, create a method called get job, which will return the object. So no longer just the, the 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 position, but the actual object. So what we do here is we create public now the data type is an integer because it's not position, it's actually returning a job object. So we're going to say get job. We again receive through the title. Come in. Good morning all. Yes, there you Guys, please, if you don't mind, during the last five minutes before the bell goes, please log in for us to exam 37 again. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm going to bring a few yellow chairs in this morning. Just kids on the chairs during the exam driving crazy. Up and down. I'm, and I'm down. busy recording a live stream to YouTube. Hello, yellow. <laughs> There's okay. not a webcam saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right, um, now. <coughs> Uh, I, I, quite a pity I didn't have my webcam on there for. Uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah. All right. So, job. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to get the position by literally running our get pos. We don't need to re re, re uh, reinvent the wheel. We've done that there. But what I do need to check is if pos is equal to negative one, then I know that I didn't find the object. So, if it is equal to negative one, you then return null instead of actually returning an object. So you just say, nope, there's nothing, we didn't find it, you just return null. So like negative one, when trying to find a position, is saying I didn't find it. Null means I didn't find the object over there. Um, then i go return, return, uh, if it is found, I then return jobs at position uh, pos, semicolon. All right, so then once it's got that, um, it, you you will uh, you'll see that that position of the jobs will be returned on there. Uh, so now we've got the, now it goes into the user interface. So we're done with that. I hope uh, this makes sense to you guys. So like position will give me the position. This will return the object at that position over there. So you've got two different ways of searching. You can search and return the position in the array, or you can search and return the actual physical object. So I just wanted to go through both in that. Now it asks for user interface. Now, you should add the following, and it says call the two string, ask the user for the title of the job, and display only that job. So it doesn't ask me how to create this, it just says create me a user interface in one. Now, I want to show you how to do this. This is easier than some of you may think. I'm just going to create a JFrame. I'm going to call it GUI, like it said. I'm going to add it to my Pac Man. So I'm creating my GUI frame. Now, it says that it wants to add the three, three um, you should add the following three jobs. System analysis, D ray, da 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 da. Okay, so we'll design the UE just now. Right now it says crazy, you should initialize a job manager called JMAN. So in my source code at the top here, it doesn't matter if it's private or public because it doesn't specify. I'm going to go job manager uh, JMAN. So I'm doing, I've declared my job manager object. You can call it whatever you want. I am then going to 
use the default constructor to initialize it. Remember, you need to actually initialize. So you see my GUI class, when I say new JFrame, it already has a default constructor. And inside the main, which actually when you press play, it runs this, it creates an instance of itself, which runs this method, which then initializes the object. And it then says I should add the following through a system analysis from deranged to a hardcore coder and a graphics designer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to... Sorry? Okay, sure. Oh, there's no projector on. Um, cool. I, I, will you just make sure it turns on for me? Sorry, I thought the projector was on, actually. Um, but it's, so mostly looking at the stream version. Uh, now, so I've created... Uh, I've declared... It's turning on, yeah. I've declared that it just takes a while to warm up the bolt. Um, okay, so from there, I've declared uh, my... And I initialized it here. Now I want to create those three instances. So jman.addjob. My first job is a system analyst. So system analyst. And it's from company d-ranged. My next job, copy paste, is a hardcore coder. Hardcore coder. And that's also deranged. My third job is a data analyst, I think. No graphics designer. Graphics designer. And that's in a company called Pretty Things. Okay, so we've added the three jobs to our array. Now, I told you that I'd go through the example of what's happening in RAM when I start doing the GUI. So I'm going to do that now. We've added three jobs. So system analyst, deranged, mm -hmm. so forth. So what we've done is the first time we ran the add jobs method, it created a new job at position num jobs. Position num jobs is there. So firstly, it goes new job. So remember, we read, it executes from right to left. So new job. So create a new job called title and company. So this is system analyst. So create an object of system analyst and the company being d dash range. Now remember, it used this constructor to create this new job. It used this constructor. So if I press control and I click on it, it takes me to what it used it. And it says title is equal to title and company. Description becomes blank. Available becomes true. And salary becomes zero. So it's done that. And then it says, so we've, we've now finished executing this, so we go back to where we were, to the job manager. Okay, so we, it will then add it into num jobs, position num jobs. So we look in our array, position num jobs is at zero. So h3 is where my new my object at position zero contains. Because remember, initial it creates the object. So h3 is where my object is, the new object that I initialized. So we read from the right to the left. Plus plus num jobs plus plus means that num jobs is now going to become one, so it's pointing to the next position in the array. Okay, I then go back to my GUI. It's finished adding that job, so it then goes to the next job. It goes so I press Control, I click on Add Job, so it sends to title and whatever it adds it here. It says we read it from left to right and execute right to left. So a new job, so create an object, new job, sending through the title and the. So in this case, it is a hardcore coder. Also for D dash range. Again, it sends it through to here, which would give it send through the title, will be to the title, the company, the company, blank true zero. Blank true zero. Okay, so now I go back, it, it's done. It now goes back into here. Num so we write to left, we're executing. So it goes into position num jobs of the jobs array. So this position num jobs is position one now, which refers to H4. So H4 is now that. Okay, so now that it's been put into there, num jobs plus plus. So num jobs becomes two. We now go through. We this time I will go back to our GUI. This time we're sending through graphics design and pretty things. So a job sends through graphics design and pretty things. We read from right, we read from left to right, we execute right to left. So we're executing this, so a new job is created of title. So title and company is then put into title and company. So in this case it's graphics designer and this is for now pretty thing so whatever objects we receive through again blank true um, okay guys please log on to uh, our exam 37 first the the bell has gone a little bit earlier than I anticipated but that's probably because I got the time wrong um, and go zero and then what will happen is num jobs will then be incremented by one um, 
and then this will become H5. I'm going to uh, continue this video afterwards uh, just to finish up this last bit of uh, GUI. Um, so I do feel that the, this, this part is quite important and there's going to be a test being written here now, so I can't continue uh, talking. Um, right, so yeah, let's uh, goodbye. Yes.